This occurrence length is called service lane. So let's say this here is a highway, but you see here, the service lane is what we are concerned with. This lane has different widths. So here, let's say it's width one, here it's two, here is three, and here it's two. Now, assuming you have a car that is one meter wide, that car can pass through here. It can also pass here because two is greater than one. So this segment of the road is wide enough. This here is also wide enough. And same thing for this segment here. So in this challenge, what we need to do is find the maximum size that a vehicle can have to pass through some segments on the service lane. So in this challenge, we're going to frame this question differently and rather ask, what is the minimum width of the service lane within our segments? So let's say I select all this, these two segments here. What is the smallest value? The smallest value is one. Therefore, if I select this one and two here, I know that the maximum size that my vehicle can have is one. Likewise, if I select all this, the minimum size or the smallest value here is two. So the maximum size that my car can have is two. I'm going to use this notepad here to better clarify what I mean. Let's say we have a service lane and these are the different widths along the service lane. So at first we have a width of two, then a width of three, then one, then two, and so on. This here is a 2D array and it's called cases. Every case here actually corresponds to a range. So the range here is a range within that service lane. These here, zero and three, are for the index. So the opening index and the closing index. What is the smallest value within that range between zero and three? It's an inclusive range. So here, the smallest value is one. In this challenge, we need to have a vector of integers and we need to push the smallest values that we find inside that vector. Here, like I said, between zero and three, the smallest value here between these indices is one. So I push one to my vector. Now for case number two here, within the range of four and six for the index, so this is index four, this is index six, within that range, what is the smallest value? So the smallest value here is two. So I push two to my vector of integers. Now for case number three is this here. What is the smallest value? The smallest value is three because we only have a single value. So I push three to my vector. Now for case number four, between index three and index five, what is the smallest value? It's two here. So I push two to my vector and within my entire range here, which is the entire service lane, what is the smallest value? The smallest value is one. So I push one to my vector. Before I continue, I want to show you guys the sample inputs. So they have the same array here and the same five cases. And this is their outputs, one, two, three, two, one. And we have the same thing here. One, two, three, two, one. Let's think about how we're going to tackle this challenge programmatically. So I'm thinking of having two variables. I'm going to call them I and J. I and J here are going to correspond to the boundaries of my ranges. So this here, like I said, is my 2D array for every case. And every case here corresponds to a range within this service lane here. So the first integer inside every case is going to be for I. And the second integer is going to be for j. So again, this is i, this is j. For the next element, this is i, this is j. And same thing for this one, i and j and so on. I can also have another variable that I'm going to call k. And k here is going to be used to move through my ranges. And I'm going to move it by increasing its value. So let's pick case number one here, zero and three. So this is for this range here. What I'm trying to do here is find the smallest integer here within that range to update another variable that I'm calling smallest. At first, smallest could have a large value, and then I could start k at index i, and then I could verify what is the value at index k inside my width array here, and is it smaller than my current smallest value? If it is, then I update smallest with a value of the integer at index k inside of my width array here. So k is going to start here, then it's going to move here, I'm going to compare again, then it's going to move here. I'm going to compare one more time. At that point, one is my new smallest value. And then this here is index three. So the end of my range, I'm going to compare again. And I don't need to update my smallest value because my smallest value was found here, which is one. And I'm going to do that for every case. So for this case here, this is index four. This is index six. So this is my range. K will start here at index I. And then I'm going to compare here. So this is my new smallest value, and I'm going to compare with this again. So my smallest value here is going to be two. And at every iteration, I'm going to push the value of smallest 
to my vector here. So I could handle this whole thing with two loops, one for loop for every case here. So I could say for range one, then for range two and so on. And within that for loop, I could have a while loop and that while loop would be used to control K. So in that while loop, the first iteration for case number one would be this one, then this one, then this one, and then finally this one, because this is for that whole range here. Let's move to the code now. This here is the solution. There are quite a few issues with this challenge. First of all, we don't have all the parameters. When you begin this challenge, all you have is n, which is the number of cases, and you have the actual 2D array for the cases. So it's this here, but you don't receive the array for the width, which is this thing that I've just added manually. I've added it myself. Like I explained, our service lane has different width at different parts. So we need that width array to be able to run these cases. Because it's not provided as part of this challenge, you need to add it yourself. But this here is a new parameter. So you need to make sure that whenever you call this function inside the main function, and the main function is already provided, you add this third parameter here. So how can you do that? If you scroll down here, they have this width vector. It's a vector of integers. And then they populate that vector with some values. So at first, width would be empty, and then they have this thing here. Let's scroll down again. And here they are calling the service lane function. And then they store the result inside this variable here. It's actually a vector, and it's a vector of integers. So what I'm doing here is I'm passing the width vector at the top that I just talked about, this thing right here, and I'm passing it as my third argument here. So now this becomes available inside of my service lane function right here. And that's how I can use it within this function. Another thing that I want to point out is that this thing here that I just explained and denotes the size of the cases array, that thing is not actually accurate. So I'm going to make a quick example right now. If I type here, C out, the value of n, I want to have a space cases that size. This is going to be output as debug code or debug outputs inside HackerRank. And normally, if this statement here was correct, that n corresponds to the size of the cases array, these two values are supposed to be the same. Now I'm going to run this code. Don't worry, I'm going to explain my code, but I just want to clarify something here. So let's scroll down once this is done processing. And you can see that we got eight for the value of n, and we got five for the size of the cases array. So one warning here is do not use the value n, this parameter n, inside of your function to control your loops or your iterations. So I'm going to remove this, this debug code, and now I'm going to explain my code. So these here are the variables i, j, and k that we use for the ranges. And then this is smallest. So smallest here is what I'm going to use to update my vector. Now, where is this vector? We need to create it right here. And I'm setting the size of that vector to the size of the cases array. So now this is the for loop I was talking about, the main for loop. We are looping through every case and we are accessing i and j like this. Now I'm using x here and not i because I've already used i here. And for clarity, I want to use X to better make it clear that it's not this I here. Normally we use I for for loops as convention, but here I'm using X. So like I explained, the first value in every case is for I and the second value is for J. So that's what I'm doing here. And K here at every iteration, it starts at index I. Smallest is going to have the maximum int value in C++. So int max is actually a constant in C++, which is for 2 billion something, if I'm not mistaken. Now I'm looping through my range. So for instance, for this here, zero and three, it will be from here to here. And I'm looping through every integer within that range. The goal here is to move K at every iteration and verify if we need to update the value of our smallest variable. So that's what I'm doing here. As I'm looping through the range, I'm verifying if I need to update the value of my smallest variable. And then I increase K. And once I've found my smallest value, I simply update the exact position inside my vector. So my vector already has a size here, so I don't need to use the pushback methods. I can simply access every position like a normal array, and I can assign the value of my smallest variable to the elements at that position. Once I'm done, all I can do is return my vector here. So um, that's pretty much it for the entire code. Um, I've already run it, and you saw that we were able to pass the test cases. So I'm just going to submit it now. 
and we've passed all the test cases. So that's it guys for this occurrence challenge. Don't forget to add this third parameter here and then scroll down and add a third argument when this method is being called or this function rather. So it's being called here. So don't forget to pass the width vector to this function called here. And the width vector is what they've created here. And then they updated the values here. The other thing to keep in mind is don't use n because it can be a bit misleading, like I just demonstrated. So anyway, that's it. I'm going to end the video now. If you like my solution, please make sure you subscribe to my channel, turn on your notifications, and I'll catch you next time.